what does that mean to you to have so much experience going into this last year? Yeah, I, I don't see it as pressure. I see it as an advantage. You know, I've, 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 you name it, I've experienced it. You know, I've, I've been in quarterback battles. I've, I've been benched before. I've been brought in to ask to win games. I've had three offensive coordinators. I've had two head coaches. I've had a season-ending injury. Like you name it, I've, I've experienced it, and that's something that, you know, I just put, in, put in my backpack and, and go to work. You know, and I think that's, that's going to benefit me. Um, you know, this season as far as. You know, just how to how to deal with things, how to handle things. You know, I've I've realized over my course and time of my career that you know what's important and what's not, and what's 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 going to better me as a player and what's going to hurt me. You know, and um, playing playing my position, playing quarterback, it's there, there's a lot of outside noise, a lot of driving factors that um, you know that can alter our. Play, you know, and so for me, it's just it's focusing on what's important, and for for me, is is winning football games. You know, that's. That, that's all that matters. And so just bettering myself, bettering this team, um, being a leader, being a mentor, being a great teammate, that, that's what's my, uh, my priority right now. How do you feel about your You know, that, that's irrelevant. I've never paid attention to that um, or, or anything. I've, you know, case not getting any credit in that aspect, but also, you know, we didn't have a good season last year, and, and we know that. So, um, but, but, None of that is, is anything in, in our, you know, myself or our locker room that we pay attention to or, or look at. You know, we're just focused on the day and, and where we're at. You know, our relationship is, is tremendous, you know, and uh, whenever everything happened last year, you know, I, I put myself in Will's shoes. Um, and, you know, I was once in those shoes as a retro freshman playing. And just the pressure that you can feel, the kind of the expectations, uh, it's, it's very tough. And especially in his situation, coming in early out of, out of high school, not having a spring ball, not having a summer, a very limited summer, having a limited fall camp. And then he's getting thrown in there and Big 12 play asked to, to go carry us and win games, you know. Um, so for me, it was just, I, I had to put my, my pride aside, you know. Obviously, like, yeah, I, I was hurt that I got hurt and, um, you know, very troubled with that. But... Uh, I knew Will needed me uh, as a mentor and as uh, just a supporting cast, you know. And so the biggest thing for me was just being there for him, you know, trying to teach him as much as I could, um, obviously with the X's and O's, but especially with the things off the field. You know, there's a lot of outside noise that was that was getting thrown at him and, and it was undeserving, you know. And uh, just trying to encourage him, you know, that, you know, that you getting this experience is going to benefit you so much. And I know it's tough. I know it's hard. Uh, but what you're getting to do right now is, is you know, something that a lot of a lot of young players don't get, and that's experience. That's game reps. You know, you can you can practice all you want, you can do all these things, but you can't simulate a game setting where the the live bullets are flying. You know, and so I just encourage in that aspect. And from here on out, I mean, we support each other. You know, more than ever. You know? uh, he pushes me, I push him, um, and we're just focused on getting better and being. You know, the is. It, it runs the team, you know, our, our position group sets the tone for our team each and every day and couldn't be more happy with our group and what we have and the type of leaders we have in that room. What area of focus do you want to For me is this um, being deliver throws, big time throws, especially down the field. Um, on offense, explosive, we need to have more plays that uh, can open everything up, you know, because when we have trouble uh, with where we're very, we hang our hat on being being an efficient run game um, and efficient pass game. Like th those are our two emphasis, just being efficient. But if you're not, if, if you're struggling in one, it's, it's hard to do the other, but they complement each other, you know. So I think for me is, is just standing in the pocket, um, getting through my third and fourth reads, um, not forcing the ball, not not having turnovers, you know, that's a big part of our game as well. Um, and like I said, just being able to extend plays, um, put the ball downfield and being accurate with my throws. Yeah, well, in our offense, we're gonna utilize three to four running backs. And so it's important that we have Vaughn coming back, who um, is a very, very good player, and to have a guy like that who's 
he was a true freshman last year, but I'll tell you what, he, he carries himself like he's a fifth year, sixth year senior like myself. I mean, he acts like he's been there, he's done it, and he, he lifts everybody's expectations, you know, and so that, that that's an important piece of the uh, I feel like we have a very talented running back group, and it, it makes my life easier. So during, we were all, the team was um, at a team facility. So we had a, a park and, and through. And like I immediately, I was like this play and help us a lot. And like, I don't care how big he is or whatever the case may be, like, You know, he's you know, that's the thing that surprised me the most about Deuce early on was just his understanding of the overall concept of offense is each and every play. Um, super fun to work with. He's super motivating. You know, he lifts me. He raises my play, you know, because I know he's going to bring it every single play as well. So, um Whenever you're sharing a backfield with a guy like that, it's just it's gonna make you better. It makes the game fun. What are your thoughts on the well, I'll, you know what I mean, it was definitely obviously uh, a unique season, um, and. I mean, a big part of being a part of a big part of K State is playing in Bill Snyder Family Stadium. I mean, it's a huge home field advantage whenever we play at home. Um, we got fifty-five thousand people there, screaming their lungs out, wearing purple. You know, that that's a huge advantage for us, and um, that's that's what most excites me about this year is being able to get the fans back, to the stadium, getting the full experience. You know, and for me, you know, hopefully a, a normal year my last one you know that's a huge very grateful and thankful for um but even both sides you know it's 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 no fun going playing on the road with no fans in the stadium like that's 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 what you play the game for you know i mean you you, you play for that adversity and that um being up against it being the underdog like or whatever the case may be like that's that's what makes the game really fun and uh so i'm just super excited for that to be back um Yeah, well, Warner Days uh, through high school, that was, that was, and I wanted to be number to college, but it was, and then throughout my time, like, I've thought about switching, but it just never really timed up well, and, you know, with this year, with an unexpected, you know, incident of me getting hurt and having another year to come back, you know, I just, I was like, why not? You know, why not, why not finish this thing like, the, like I started it? And, you know, that number, the number means, means a lot to me, you know, and I, I always had coaches when I was younger say, your number doesn't mean anything. It's all about the player, but, and I'm, I'm hundred percent agree, but it also, you know, just looking at that number, it, it makes me smile. You know, it makes, it, it takes me back to a little kid in third grade playing ball for the first time and just loving it, you know, and uh, that that was a big big driving force for that, and you know, I'm aware of the tradition at K State with wearing seven, that had nothing to do with my decision. To pitch, but um, you know, it, it just worked out well, and um, I thought it was a great opportunity, great time for me to do so. I definitely for 
the deep play. And, you know, it's just interesting. Just like you said, I've, I've played a lot. I've been in the conference for a while. And it's been really interesting to see teams evolve and kind of, you know, change their schemes or whatever the case may be um, to fit our conference and what, what people are doing. And, you know, I'm really excited about our defense this year. I think we've had some really good additions that are really going to help us. Um, you know, guys are, are flying around and competing and bought in. You know, for me, whenever, because obviously that's what we're facing against all the time, whenever whenever they're doing that, it's going to vice versa. Big emphasis for being in practice. Makes that interesting, and you know, because there's a lot of a lot of teams early on were four down front, um, you know, and whatnot, and then went to three down, and now it's more back to, to four down scheme. So it's just interesting to see how that works, and. But, but like I said, I think our conference doesn't get enough credit for the defensive play in it. Um, I think our best quality is, is toughness, you know, um, being physically and mentally tough. You know, that's something that we take pride in at K-State. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, what is being thrown at you, what are you presented with adversity-wise, you know, highs or lows. Um, you got to stay even keeled and stay tough. You know, and whenever you get punched, you got to punch back. And I feel like that's a big, big part of K-State and what we take pride in. Why don't you think Big 12 gets enough credit for Steve? Because I think there's so many high-scoring offenses. I think that, um, you know, just uh, the points that are put up, it it, it kind of just runs together as far as it's an, it's an offensive league. Um, I mean, but, I mean, just proven that, you know, I don't know exactly the record, but I'm pretty sure the Big 12 did pretty well in bowl games last year. Yes, and so I think that just goes to show that it's a very talented league on both sides, and it kind of puts a cloud over the, the defensive play. Um, and and so whenever they we, we get those opportunities in, in, um, in bowl games and whatnot, that we take pride in that, you know, and I think, you know, everybody's aware of that. Everybody's aware that we don't get credit for our defensive player and whatnot. So whenever we get those opportunities, we try to take full advantage of them. Yeah, you know, I think I think in 2019, the first time we played them, um, Something that I really took note of with Coach Kleiman in that week of preparation was all, all he talked about was K-State. You know, it was never about the opposing or their names that across their chest. It's about, it's about us, you know. And going into that game, uh, I don't know, we're a 20-point underdog, whatever the case may be, you know, that, that's a situation that, that I thrive in, that we thrive in. And... Um, Whenever everyone's not giving us a chance, doubting us, that's where you want to prove everybody wrong. And after we beat them in 2019, uh, playing last year, you know, it's we we know we can beat them. We can beat anybody, if we and stick to the script and trust the process, you know, the big the big challenge for us is being able to bring that mentality every game, you know, and and not having a roller coaster approach to um, who we're playing. To be consistent in our preparation and during this that week and, and and approach every game like we're playing you know that that's the biggest challenge for us and you know just being on a steady uphill improvement throughout the whole season rather than going you know like a roller coaster you know I, I saw a lot of improvement you know obviously they got more reps because I was I was out on some stuff uh, but definitely, you know, starting with Jaron, you know, I think I've said this before. I think he's one of the best in our room, if not the best. Um, just for him, is just being consistent, you know, and and he knows that. And I think this spring he really proved that, you know, he has a potential, you know, and uh, he's a great, great person, great, great kid. Um, and you know, I'm really excited about him and, and his uh, involvement, involvement, and. 
as far as Jake, you know, he's 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 new, he's young, uh, fresh out of high school. I think he has a uh, he has a lot of talent. You know, obviously, um, he spins the ball really well. Uh, he's smart, um, and he kind of just has that that kind of aura to him. You know, that that a quarterback needs. And so, you know, like I said, I was speaking earlier about our quarterback room. I think from top to bottom, I mean, we have we have a really, really, really good quarterback room. Guys that are bought in, guys that are great leaders, do things right, work hard um, from top to bottom. You know, and that's what you want. That's what drives the program. You know, if you, if you got quarterbacks that are not bought in, that are doing silly things, whatever the case may be, it's going to it's going to have an effect on everyone. So um, and being led by Coach Klein, you know, it's it, it's all around us a win win for us. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, they're both special players. Um, and, and honestly, whenever, uh, whenever Julius, we call him Juju, whenever Juju um, got here and was walking around, I was like, who is this guy? It was like he's play receiver, and they were saying he's playing corner. Um, but he's tall, he's long, and, I mean, he's truly, he's a guy that, I mean, it's a quarterback's nightmare to go against because he's, he's so long and, and he's really athletic, very explosive to where, I mean, even if he does get beat, he gets back in the picture because he, he can he can make up for it with his, his wingspan and, and his length. And he, it, it makes it hard for receivers to get off the ball and, and stuff because he, he can get your hands on you all the time. So, I mean, he's a tremendous addition to our team. Uh, he loves football. He's always up in the complex, watching film, getting better, which that's what we need, you know, and um, so I'm excited about him. And then uh, Daniel, who we call Bebe, he, uh, you know, he, he's a really special player. You know, whenever he committed here, um, I reached out to him. We got on the phone and kind of just shared our stories. And, you know, he's, he's been around the block. You know, he's, he's played with Sam Darnold in the Rose Bowl. He's played Alabama in this stadium. You know, he's, he's been there and he's done it. And I think that's the, the best part about him is he brings so much experience and, um, and uh, just perspective to the game that you can't, you can't just make up or simulate, you know? And he's super long, he's super athletic. He really, he understands how to use his hands and get open, you know, and he understands the game of football, which goes back to him playing so much. So um, just it's very similar to the Bradley situation. You know, it, it's, a, it's a great addition to our, to our family and our team. And, um, he's really going to help our team win to football games. Yeah, well, it gives gives us a lot of confidence, you know. And I, I full heartedly believe we got one of the best line in in the country. And um, I, I think all those guys are are bought in and. They're, they gel well together, you know. I think that's, that's the most important piece to an offensive line is being able to, to to come together as one and gel well together. And, you know, with Noah Johnson leading the way at center, um, he's a very gritty guy that just works his tail off. He's, he's undersized. Um, he's been up against it his whole life. And he's getting an opportunity to, to go lead the way in the Big 12, on a Big 12 team and at, at K-State. You know, he, he takes full advantage of it. And... Everybody else feeds off of it, off of his energy, and you know I'm super excited to have them all back. You know it, it gives me a lot of a lot of confidence and allows me to take a deep breath. You know that um, I'm going to be protected. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, I think the biggest thing. Um, for Deuce this offseason was having a offseason to get stronger and, and get his body built um, to where he can withstand the, the hits and blows uh, that he's going to receive, you know, because um, he, he can do it all, you know, and, and that's something that we've been implementing and, and trying to, to, you know, implement things or schemes and whatnot to where we can get him the ball because um, obviously he's a really special player. So, um, you know, it, it's been great to work with him this offseason and, and see him progress as a player. You know, he's had a really good year, but he's never satis satisfied. And um, I think that's that's the, the most special thing about him. Oh, 100%. I mean, 
I don't think there's a better place than Manhattan for, for NIL just for that reason. I mean, we have such a strong supporting cast in Manhattan and everybody loves K-State football, you know? So um, even though it's not the, the national trademark deals or whatever the case may be, I feel like our guys are gonna have a lot of, a lot of opportunities um, if they so you know choose to, to take advantage of them. Um, and you know, that's unique. I think that that's really cool um, to have that support, have that, um, you know, backup from, from, from companies in Manhattan. You know, the biggest thing for us is just as players is just realizing like whenever you sign a deal, whenever you stamp your name on something that represents you and, uh, with the city of Manhattan, there's great people, great organizations. I feel like that's something that's really going to compliment us as players. Um, the biggest challenge for, um, myself and I probably our whole team coming out of quarantine was you know you were everybody was at home and doing things on their own um and in in football you know there's 130 guys on a roster and a big part of our development and success as a team is how close you become to one another and um that was something that was really hard for us to do because we're all apart all in separate cities so we weren't going through that day-to-day -day grind of workouts and whatnot where we're we're growing together. We're, we're, you know, we're going through tough times. We're going through great times. Uh, so coming back together after that, it was really hard to really have that chemistry built. Um, and it almost felt like you're trying to force things to, to work and function rather than just letting it happen itself. You know, we haven't really talked about it, but obviously we're aware of it. And uh, for me personally, I think it's, I think it's, it's something that should happen. I mean, you look in the years past and um, some of the undefeated teams that have, that have had really good seasons that are not maybe power five teams or whatever the case may be, I believe they, they, they deserve a chance, you know. And, um, you know, I, I think it, it would just provide a spark to the game that would make it even more fun than it already is and give an underdog team a chance to go win it all. You know, and I think that's that's something that everybody wants to see. Yeah, well, um, you know, it provides a, a perspective of the game that, like I said, you can't simulate. You know, it's it's something that um, it, it can't be taught or, or anything like that. Like it's. It's truly so unique, and he's helped me so much just as far as understanding, you know, the ins and outs to, okay, I'm running this route, but versus this coverage, this is how I'm going to run it, you know, and this is where you can anticipate the ball to, to throw it. Um, and for, for us, that's all, any type of receiver, tight end, running back connection, it's all built through trust. And uh, Daniel's a guy that I trust with, with my, my life, you know. I mean, he's, he's an unbelievable guy. Um, he's a really good leader, really good person, and having a guy like that to throw the ball to, it, it gives you confidence. And knowing that he's going to go fight for me, just like I'll go fight for him. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think, uh, I mean, Julius Brents. Uh, our new corner is, is, I think, is due for a really good season. I mean, he's he's really impressive. He's really, really strong. He's he's an unbelievable player. Um, and so, yeah, I, I would say I would say him. Um, and I would say on offense, you know, I think you know, obviously, everybody knows who Malik is. I think Malik's due for a really big year. You know, he's had a he's had a good off season. Um, he, he finished the year strong last year. He's he's playing with confidence you know and I think for him you know he understands he can be our go-to guy and he can he can make a lot of big plays um so I'm really looking forward to him and, and um who's obviously known for his his returning abilities but I think he's grown a ton as a receiver um and he's a very experienced guy that um that is really just going to help us you know and and he's very electric very fast and can turn a turn a bubble screen into a touchdown so um, having guys like that and as a quarterback, it just it makes your life easy. Yeah, of course. I mean, 
that was that was the hardest part i mean because everybody had to realize that one person making the wrong move could affect our whole team you know and i mean what a what a great example of really i mean just the overall concept of football and you know like just like in in a game you know one guy makes a mistake it affects, affects everybody you know and that was my driving message to everyone is just understanding like what's the bigger picture here and what are we trying to do you know and you know i thought for the most part i thought we did a great job of of taking care of what we needed to take care of and and guys doing the right things obviously we had some cases here and there um but also just understanding like some of that is out of our control and something that we can't um you know allow to to affect our team um and whatnot so it was definitely a challenge but every team in the in the country faced it and you know i thought for the most part we handled it really well You know, I think he's just grown a ton personally. I, you know, I think, I think Joe has a lot of talent. Um, he's very, very gifted. Uh, but it was like it was the little things, um, you know, off the field that were holding him back. As far as just showing up to tutors on time, or going to class, you know, those things like that was what was holding Joe back. And um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, he he has not been on any list this whole spring. Um, you know, and I think that's. He opted out last year, so I think that gave him some time to really think about, you know, what he really wanted to do, what, it, you know, what he wanted to accomplish here, you know, and, um, you know, for all of us, like, you know, that's a big thing that, you know, you got to take care of things off the field in order to, to be successful on there, and and going to class and going to tutor sessions, being respectful, all those things is is something that carries over in us winning football games, and, um, you know, J Joe is is an unbelievable person, you know, I, I love him, he's in my leadership group. And I've really got to know Joe. He has a he has a smile and a and a personality that can can light up the room. And he's really came into that. Scott, what's the next step for Kansas State football to take this year in terms of becoming a tier team? Yeah, I, I think for for us, it's just um, you know, obviously, like we're here to win win a Big Twelve championship, you know, and that that's our ultimate goal. Uh, but for us, it's just being consistent, being consistent and, and approaching every game like it's our last, you know. And I feel like when you do that, that's, that's gonna, the, the wins are going to take care of themselves. Um, and, you know, f for us, you know, th that's been our, my, over the time that I've been here. You know, like we, we will have a bad season and we'll have a very motivated off season and come back and have a really good season. And we'll come off of a good season and have, a, have an average season, you know. So it, it's kind of a roller coaster. So the biggest thing for us is just being consistent every single day. Um, and and focusing on you know just winning today, you know, and I think that that's that's our biggest uh, motive uh, for our team right now and moving forward, and that's gonna that's gonna help us establish that. Uh, yeah, Timmy. Timmy's a really really special special player. Um, and that, that's one guy that I left out as far as uh, in the spring ball that's going to have an impact on our team. You know, he's he's a guy who's very long. He has really long arms, he, you know, and Noah Johnson goes up against him every day. And there'd be times after practice, like, dude, like, I, there's literally nothing I can do about this. Like, he's he, he gets his hands on me, and it, it's so hard to get him off, you know. And um, on top of that, he's, he's a very, very special person. You know, he just got married two weeks ago. Um, and so adding guys like that to our team that are experienced, that are, that are good people that love football, you know, that that's having seniors in our, on our team, um, that carry themselves in such a way is going to impact our entire football team. And that's a, that's very important for us. Yeah, I think our linebacker group is very deep, um, and very talented and, um, you know, I think having guys like Cody Fletcher come back, who's a, who's a super senior like myself, um, and for him to have a role to be a starter, you know, I think he's been very hungry and motivated for that this offseason. Um, and then I think Daniel Green um, has been doing a really, really good job. He's stepped up as a leader um, and has shown stri I mean, he's shows strides of, of improvement. And uh, then you throw in Eric Munoz, who just transferred from Utah State. Um, you know, and we got Ryan Hanging. I mean, we got guys 
um, that are all very talented in their own way that play really well together and they're all good good players good people you know and I think whenever you have a good group of a deep group it's gonna make everybody better see no we still call him deuce okay. but it gets confusing okay. you know because I'll call him deuce and then little deuce will will <laughs> will answer so like you have to be more specific and call him Daniel I try to <laughs> No, no, that was just something I just said. That's not something I would ever say. No, and don't tell him I said that, by the way. Yeah.